Hello, my name is Jacob Colgrove, the System Product Manager here at Redline Controls. And in this series of videos, I'm going to teach you how to create a simple program using our IEC 61131 programming software, Crimson Control. This simple program will teach you how to create new programs, insert variables, and the differences between the programming languages. There are four different programming languages in Crimson Control. Ladder Diagram, Function Block Diagram, Structured Text, and instruction list. So let's start now and create this simple program with an AND functionality, meaning that when two switches go high, the output will go high. Now let's create our first program using our graphical language, Ladder Diagram. Now we'll go down to the control category to create our control program under the navigation pane. And you notice when the page opens up, it starts at the project subheading up at the top. This is where you set program execution. So if you look at program execution, by default, it's set to not execute. So we'll change that to execute periodically. The start mode field sets what the default values of the variables will be on a power cycle. So warm will show the last value. So that will be the last known value before the controller was power cycled. Cold will set the variables to zero or the default value. The cycle time is the periodic value in which the program will run. We can set that to a different variable. 100 milliseconds is the fastest time that you can set. The execution order window down here will allow you to control which program, if you have multiple programs, will run first. So you can set the order in which they execute. Next, we'll click on the first program on the left-hand side in the navigation pane. You'll notice that the default language is function block diagram. We want to make our program with ladder diagram first. So I'll right click on that program one and delete it. To create a new program, I'll right click on the programs category there and I'll click on new, then select main program. The language will be ladder diagram, and then I'll type in the program name, which in this case I'll use first underscore program, and then click OK. The program we're creating will have an AND function with two switches and an output. The idea is so when the two switches turn on, the output will turn on. Click in the editor window, and you'll notice once you do that, the editor toolbar will appear on the top of the screen. To insert a new rung, we'll start with a contact. So we'll click on the insert contact before or after uh, buttons on the toolbar. And this will start off by creating our switch and a coil. And immediately what you'll see is that it will present us with a variable selection window uh, so that we can define which variable will be assigned to this contact. Now, if you had variables already assigned, you'd see a list of them here and you could select from, from the list. Since we don't have any variables it's blank so we'll add a new variable name and I'll use switch one as my variable name then I'll click OK then I'll be presented with this window to create my variable the variable type is boolean so that's what I want that's works good with a contact and this will automatically be suggested on which one we want to use where is the dictionary that the variable will be stored in the global dictionary can be accessed by all the programs in crimson control the first program selection there is the local dictionary so these will be variables that can only be used by the program that you're storing it in so that's what i'm going to select here selecting the retained dictionary will allow the last known value to be restored on a power cycle the description field can allow you to add a a little bit more data about that variable. Click yes. Next we need to create the next contact and we're going to put it in series so that it creates that and boolean logic. So we'll click insert contact after and we'll type in switch two as the name. We'll set the same parameters that we did for switch one. So here we see the two switches with variables assigned and a coil with no variable assigned. Another way to add variables to the program is to double click on an empty symbol that's in your program. Double click on the coil and then type pump as the name. The type is boolean. Where is the same local dictionary first program. To check for errors click on the verify button in the toolbar. Once your errors are corrected or you see that there are no errors in your project you can click the build button which will build your program so that it can run on your graphite device. So you'll notice the variables are all organized in the navigation pane section under the first program. So go open up your first program, then open, open up your local variables, and you'll see all the variables exist here and organized nicely under this program, but they only exist within this program. 
so other parts of the controller cannot access them. So in order to access them, what we'll do is assign them to data tags. And these data tags are used within the Crimson database for protocol conversion, data logging, graphics. To assign it to a data tag, click on the variable in the navigation pane, which will open up the variable configuration window. Click on source, then click on new tag. Then we'll be presented with this create new item window. And this is where the data tag is defined. The suggested tag name for the data tag is the program name dot the variable name. This will organize the data tags and make them easy to find. And then the data type of flag tag is what we'll use because flag tag is for discretes. The extent and element parameters allow us to define the parameters of an array if we're going to use that in the data tag. And we'll click OK. Then we'll do the same thing for switch to and we'll do the same thing for pump. And after we've done that, we can go to the data tags category in the navigation pane to see all of our data tags that have been created based on the control variables. Now we'll go to the display pages category so that we can create our graphics page. Now we'll go to the resource pane and select two state toggles. I'll drag my first toggle switch onto the page, adjust that. I'll drag another switch onto the page, which will represent switch two. I'll right click and go to size same as, and click on the first switch so that they're the same size. Now we'll go to indicators, drag that onto my page, right click and go to size same as, and click on one of the switches so that they're the same size. I'll adjust my graphics. Now I'll link a data tag to my graphics. I'll do that by double clicking on the first switch. Then I'll go to the resource pane and click on data tags. Then I'll select my data tag and drag it into the value field. We'll do the same for switch two by dragging in the switch two data tag. For the indicator, we'll drag in the pump variable into the status field. Now we can load the database into the core controller. To view the program running in the core controller, using the graphics that we created. Open up your Edge or Internet Explorer browser and type in the address 192.168.1.20. This is the address of the core controller that we programmed. Click on the remote view option to view the graphics. There we can have full control by clicking on the graphics. So click on the on position of the first switch and click the on position of the second switch and the light will come on showing that the code in the core controller is running. That's it, that's all there is to it. We've created a simple program using ladder diagram. Please join me in the next video and we'll create this same program using function block diagram.